Well, hi guys, and welcome back to another episode with C and D Hobbies. Now, this time we're back in the training room, and our hope is to go ahead and give you today's layout update video. Now, as you can see from what we have in the shot already, we've made a great deal of progress since my last layout update. We've got our base layer down. This is all indoor/outdoor carpet, and then uh, we have our track actually laid all the way around for the entire portion of the main level. Now I know for right now we're just starting out looking uh, at what before I called the north end of the layout where we have our, uh, our double track overhead uh, MTH steel arch bridges and we also have as you can see right now where we're kind of looking our uh, Lego essentially what's going to be our amusement park and you can see some of my creator expert sets that I have placed there starting to get an idea about how spacing and how placement may start to come together in that part as we move forward. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, what you're going to see is that we actually have a good bit of room that we're working with around here. And you can see that we're standing at the far end of the peninsula looking over at some sections. Now, I do want to point out, because last time in my last video, I did a really poor job of explaining this. I kind of skipped over it altogether. Over in this corner, we're going to have a switch yard. Now, in this corner, you can see some of where you can see my yard lead switch coming off my inside main there. Uh, there's another crossover there in the background. And you can see some test fit pieces that I have just for, again, try to get some placement and sizing. I decided to invest in the rest of my track first before I built out the rest of that yard. Obviously switches are the most expensive piece of track that you can buy. And uh, so I was taking my time and kind of breaking that those purchases up and spreading them out a little bit. In the meantime though, as I said before, we've got our main lines all set. And uh, we're going to do some testing on them in just a minute, just as soon as I give you guys the rest of the tour around. So here's a little bit different angle of that amusement park area that I was just showing you. And you can see where the main lines kind of converge and diverge again as they come around. Now we're going to go ahead and pan over to the left here. And you can see in the background where our main line swoops out around. That's actually our stairwell, that open area back there. And we can see a little bit better look of how we have everything just kind of trial place for our amusement park, our Lego Creator amusement park right now. Now drawing your attention back to the background, we can see again, we come around, we have our main line swooping around the yard area. And that's going to be where we cut to next to go ahead and show you back to the south end of the layout. Okay, so here we are with the camera positioned back into the yard area, or what will become the yard area. And at the very bottom of your screen, all the way to the right, you can see our crossover that we have installed. That's one of our two mainline crossovers. And as I said before, you can also see our yard lead coming off the main track there. Now, of course, now we have that long run running up. This is going to be the west side of the layout. And you can see where the outside track actually stays at track level for right now. Our inside track, on the other hand, begins our run up with our trestle, but eventually goes on up to our swing bridge that's there in the background. Okay, now before we move away from our placement here at the yard track, I wanted to show you back an overview of the peninsula and how things look there. You can see where the tracks are making their whole loop. You can also see our second crossover that we have. Now these are reverse crossovers. You'll notice the crossover that you're looking at right now is made with left-hand turnouts. The first crossover that I showed a moment ago is made with right-hand turnouts. So here we are now at the south end of the layout. And as I pan around, you can see the rest of where our trestle now begins descending from the bridge. How nice this all really came together. Of course, you see a little bit of my control systems there. That post-war ZW right now is just temporarily set up there just to power up the bridge for its testing. And uh, eventually we're going to install our control panel in the area where you're looking at right now and redo our control systems to look a little bit nicer. But you can see just like the first side, now on the east side we have the mirror image of the west side, although I have a few tools in the way, that our trestle again comes right back on down just like it did before. So here's a, one other little fun point before we leave this area, and that is this wonderful connection that I have uh, electrically between my top two rails and my actually bottom two rails. You're saying, gee, I only see one set of wires there. Well, I'll explain that in just a minute. But uh, literally, I just have a couple of ring terminals stuck into a rail joint up on the upper rails, 
and I have it feeding down to the lower rails where it's literally held in place against the, um, the center rail and the outside rail by just as you see a couple of alligator clips. Now keep in mind that the only jumper that's been pulled out of all the fast track pieces on the main level so far is the one that you're actually seeing right beneath that one little section of track right there. Um, so it is actually cross-connected. I do have it basically re-jumped um, the way that I have the alligator clip sitting there. But the entire electrical system for the bottom rail is in fact coming, or the main level rail, is coming from this one connection right here. It's kind of amazing. Uh, so I'm sure some folks would think that I've done something else to my fast track, but literally all I've done is take it out, connect it, set it up how I want it, and I literally have total continuity, not only on the loop where the, uh, where the wires are currently connected, I also have total continuity all around on the outer loop as well. The only connections between the inner and outer loops right now are the two crossovers. So this is nothing but a lot of fast track hooked up to itself right now. And uh, miraculously, I have no breaks in continuity. My DCS and legacy signal is great. Um, all around, I have no problem command controlling either engines. I've tested both the Lino Legacy engines and the MTH DCS engines on both inner and outer loops, and uh, it's really surprising. So when we come back with our next clip, we're going to go ahead and fire up one of our Lino Legacy engines and take it for a little spin and let you guys see it make its maiden voyage around.
glitch in the recording there because we got hung up on one of our wires for our switch uh, controller. But as y'all saw, the locomotive wanting to keep going without uh, electricity was definitely not the problem there. For my eagle-eyed viewers, no, unfortunately your eyes do not deceive you. The tender does not work properly on my Vision Line Challenger. And uh, I did some looking into trying to send it back for some warranty repair. But unfortunately, Lionel does not have a service center anywhere in my area or a remote receiving center in my area anymore. So I'm still trigger trying to figure out how to uh, handle that. But I'll get it figured out eventually. Obviously very disappointed that it does not work correctly out the box. It's a shame because the rest of the locomotive is absolutely incredible. And here's one last look. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, unfortunately my tender here should be lit up. Um, those three lights, there's three red lights across the back, two on the sides, one at the very top, and of course also the main light when the train is in reverse, our reverse spotlight there right above the 3949 should also be lit up. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. But unfortunately, my tender doesn't have any power at all to it. Um, there's supposed to be a separate sound system that's in the tender to give stereo sounds. Uh, there's an electrocoupler. Um, it's evidently not getting power uh, because every now and again it will kick on. Uh, there must be a loose connection or a broken wire somewhere that probably needs to be traced. Um, when it kicks on, it sounds good, it looks great, and everything works like it should. So I think all the circuits inside there are fine. It's just a matter of, unfortunately, we're just not getting power all the time that we should. Anyway, frustrating problem, and that's a big reason why you guys have not seen this locomotive as a feature, even though it was my very first video and I did the unboxing on it. But hey, uh, we'll get it traced out, we'll get it going good, and I'll be able to do a full feature video on it as soon as I get all that worked out. Although, as you guys can probably guess, right now the rest of the train layout is taking precedence over that. Well guys, thanks so much for joining us this time, and uh, as my junior engineer likes to say, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Bye!